With Cell defeated, the Z Fighters have decided to test their skills at the World Martial Arts Tournament. But in the midst of the action, Bojack and his henchmen have appeared, announcing their plans to take over the world. Despite their fiercest efforts, the Z Fighters have proved no match for Bojack's minions. But, spurned on by the memory of his father, Goku, and his noble sacrifice against Cell, Gohan has at last cast aside his inhibitions and allowed his true power to come bursting to the surface. Time has passed since Gohan defeated Cell. A new martial arts tournament was planned, funded by the infamous billionaire, Mr. XS Cash. For the winner, 100 million zenny, a dream vacation, and a chance to fight the champ himself, Hercule. The Z fighters entered to test their skills. Gohan quickly advanced to the finals, but who would be his next opponent? The second match in the finals was Trunks versus Tien. Trunks, don't even think about holding back on me. Right, let's go. This isn't really quite a world tournament. It was supposed to be an intergalactic tournament for Mr. XS Cash's son. But of course the aliens weren't real aliens, they were just made up to look like aliens. I suppose they had no way of knowing that the Saiyans were aliens or something, even though they have incredible powers that no human could ever exhibit. Except for Tien, I guess. Tien has some of those powers himself. Speaking of Tien, he loses this fight as soon as Trunks turns Super Saiyan. I mean, you probably could have expected that would happen because Tien hasn't been relevant in a while. But you still have to remember his sacrifice in the Cell Saga, because that's really the only other sacrifice he gets to make. I mean, sure he comes back for the Boo Saga briefly, and he looks kinda awesome, but he gets beaten up by Boo's legs. So there's not much in Tien's future is what I'm saying. After a hard-fought battle, Trunks emerged victorious. <sighs> Their exciting match concluded. The two Z Fighters parted ways with mutual respect. actually use his special beam cannon on me, would he? Show me what you can do, Piccolo! You're acting like I won't even be a challenge! In spite of that dialogue making it seem like Krillin got some sort of newfound motivation to fight Piccolo, the truth is that Krillin fights Piccolo so poorly that Piccolo quits the fight out of disgust. And it's a relatively entertaining scene in the movie, but wouldn't it have made more sense to have you play as Piccolo in this situation? In general, I think this game would be a lot more interesting if you only played as the characters who have the clear upper hand for all these fights. That way you wouldn't keep winning fights and then lose in the end. I mean, I know Krillin technically didn't lose this one, but come on. It's a little weird how you win every single fight in gameplay. And then in the cutscenes, what happens in the movie happens anyway, regardless of how well you played. I guess there are the RPG elements to consider, but it's not like there aren't a ton of recurring villains that last a really long time over their individual sagas. Plus, if there's ever a character that isn't adequately leveled up, you can just drop a whole bunch of items on him at once, and that'll fix the problem right up for you. I mean, this doesn't really have anything to do with the movie, but at least I'm talking about the game for once. here with actual ability. I was wrong. I'm not going to waste any more of my time around here. Wow! They totally got lucky! It's 
over. your opponent. Wow, she's cute. But I won't hold back just because you're a girl. So this is the last important thing Krillin does in this movie, and he gets his ass kicked pretty hard. Originally, there was supposed to be a person just dressed up as an alien for Krillin to fight here, but Zangya killed them and now she's who Krillin has to fight. Likewise, the other Z-Fighters were supposed to fight a bunch of people dressed as aliens, but they're all dead too, because Bojack went and crashed the party. Of course, all this means is that Piccolo missed out on his chance to actually fight powerful opponents like he wanted. Also, the game mentions that only three Z-Fighters made it to the finals, but there was just a normal sumo wrestler who also made it here, and he gets destroyed even quicker than Krillin. Except, unlike Krillin, he doesn't get to live. Sucks to be him. Who, who are you? Who is that? Instead of fighting Bojack here, Trunks is actually supposed to fight another one of Bojack's henchmen, Kogu. And Kogu doesn't have a lot to his name, but to be fair he has more than Android 15 and 14. Kogu unsuccessfully ambushes Trunks, and then Trunks is like, Hey, why did you bring a sword to the tournament? That's not cool. And then Trunks gets the shit pounded out of him because he wasn't expecting Kogu to be that strong. Kogu even has the capability of transforming something that only Bojack is shown to have aside from Kogu. But that doesn't really stop Kogu from getting killed in one punch when Trunks does turn Super Saiyan. Yeah, he kills him pretty fast as soon as he figures out that killing is how the situation has to be resolved. Still, Trunks is worn out enough from Kogu's fight that Bojack is able to ambush him and knock him out. So I guess Kogu kinda didn't die for nothing, even though he totally did. Also, Trunks didn't have his sword during the fight because, you know, the tournament didn't allow swords. But there's no character model of Trunks without a sword. And even if there were, this is the wrong fight, so it doesn't really matter. Oh yeah, and also Kogu's sword got broken, because you can't have a sword in this series unless it also breaks, unless you're Yajirobe. I also don't think Kogu is playable in any of the Dragon Ball games unless you count Dragon Ball Heroes, and nobody counts Dragon Ball Heroes. He even missed the train to be in Raging Blast 2, and all the unimportant characters were in Raging Blast 2. Zangia gets to have a spot in most of the Dragon Ball fighting games, though, because she has a lot more line than the other Bojack henchmen, and a lot more pers- okay, maybe not a lot more personality. Hey kid, Earth is a great planet, huh? Incredible! No one can match the power of Lord Bojack. And the planet Earth is such a beautiful world. A perfect place for him to rule the galaxy. Don't! Underestimate us!
Man, that cutscene has so little context, you might as well have not done anything before that scene and just skip straight to it. I mean, what's the point? Anyway, Yamcha and Tien do show up to help in the movie, but they get destroyed pretty quickly by Bojack's remaining henchmen. I mean, they live, of course. So you heard Zangya mention that Bojack could totally rule the galaxy from here and that Earth is pretty, but Bojack also came here to seek out some competition, to find anyone that could possibly prevent him from ruling the universe, so he could kill them early, get that out of the way. And it's a good thing Gohan and company happen to be on Earth, otherwise Bojack probably would have annihilated everyone by sneezing on them. You might notice Goku isn't in this movie, and that's because he's supposed to be dead. This is post-Cell Games. But all the other movies don't seem to give a single shit about the canon, so I'm not sure why this one does. I guess it's to give Gohan another big hero moment, but he's already had several of those at this point. One of them with Garlic Jr., even. And oh yeah, Trunks is here too, when he's not supposed to be, but I think it's implied that he just kind of showed up for a visit or something. Which, whatever, I guess you can do that. It's kind of weird that the game's adaptation of this movie provides a lot more context than most of the adaptations, but all of the fights are still wrong because you're fighting the wrong people. If you're that weak, you'll never beat me! I suppose you think you're pretty tough, don't you? Piccolo! So Gohan attempted to fight Bojack and was incredibly unsuccessful in that endeavor, and that's why Piccolo showed up to save the day. He deflected one of Bojack's blasts using a special beam cannon, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but whatever. Then Piccolo joins the fight and suddenly things get more interesting. It's actually kind of a big fight with multiple characters doing several smaller fights at the same time. Like Future Trunks gets in there to help Piccolo fight Bojack, and then and then Future Trunks gets held back by Bojack's henchmen, and then Vegeta shows up to save Trunks and also give him his sword in a really dramatic way. And then Vegeta joins the fight and Bojack's henchmen are surprisingly competent for anime henchmen, and actually manage to beat down Trunks, while Bojack himself takes care of Vegeta. Of course, because this is Tenkaichi 2 that has to be extended into its own fight. But at least the fight is somewhat interesting. The resolution is again not so much, but we'll get to that during the next fight. Shoot! You're going to pay for that! Going to destroy him! I appreciate that the game actually explained Bojack's backstory a while ago through text in one of the cutscenes. It wasn't very eloquent. But at least it was done. But could they not have said something about Bojack transforming? I feel like that's kind of important to mention. They mention it after the fight, but mentioning it beforehand would have been nice. Anyway, as I said last time, Vegeta and Trunks were actually having kind of separate fights during this part of the movie. But they don't have character models or characters for Bojack's henchmen, so this will have to do. There isn't much she could have done about that, I think. But yeah, the end result of this fight 
is that everybody but Gohan ends up unconscious on the ground and all hope seems lost. And you might genuinely think, man, how are they going to get out of this one? Because you know they're going to get out of it, but you're kind of curious how they're going to get out of it. And then it's some bullshit. At least this movie and the fights in this movie are more interesting to watch than Broly, but the resolution is just as bad. It may actually be worse because they go to they go to a length to make sure you think it won't happen and then it does anyway. Finish. Yeah! Ah! Won't get away with this! What? Using his powers of instant transmission to surprise Bojack, Goku turned the tide of the battle with one blow. Gohan, show us your true power! You can't hold back! It's up to you to protect the Earth! My father saved me! And he said you weren't going to get away with this! He told me that I was to protect the Earth now! See, I swear this exact thing happened, only it was less bullshit last time. Like when Garlic Jr. showed up, that, that whole saga was about Gohan learning that he has to protect the Earth when Goku's not around. And it was about showing him as a true hero capable of protecting the Earth. And even if that, you know, filler saga didn't happen, he already did this during the Cell games. He already knew that it was his responsibility to save people when no one else could. He learned that during that fight with Cell. So what in the hell was this? It's made even worse by the fact that they explicitly don't include Goku in the movie up until this point. They go out of their way to make sure you know he's dead and can't interfere. And King Kai even says, no Goku, you can't interfere. And then he interferes anyway because I guess the writers didn't care. I guess Android 16's speech and Goku's sacrifice didn't mean jack shit until Goku showed up again and then Gohan was like, Oh yeah, I remember now, my dad died last time because I was a little shit. Oh yeah, before I forget, Zangia dies during this because Bojack shoots a laser through her in an attempt to get at Gohan. Also, Gohan's supposed to be a Super Saiyan 2 right now, but he's not because I want to spam this. But yeah, this movie isn't isn't as bad as Broly, but I really don't like the resolution one bit. And there's no possible explanation I can think that makes any sense with events that have occurred previously. It fails to be an interesting character moment for Gohan, it fails to build on what happened previously, and it fails to follow any of its own goddamn rules. Like, what was the point of Goku even being dead? But at least the henchmen were actually competent and the fight scenes were actually kind of interesting. With his true power unleashed, Gohan crushed Bojack. Having proven himself up to the task, the mantle of Earth's protector was passed on to Gohan. Gohan, you did fine. 